Why won't he answer my text messages? Part 1 During your seduction, if we were not bombarding you with those delicious text messages which complimented you, invited you out, and also described what we would like to do to you in bed that night, then when you did answer our text messages, you would then invariably receive a lightning-quick response yourself. This is all part of the conditioning, which is part of the seduction, and revolves around the concept of the message hook. Even if we were driving, we managed to somehow rattle off a reply. Or if we had a meeting, there would be a surreptitious response texted from underneath the desk or boardroom table. And then what about those late night messages which made you smile and think about us? Yes, as we seduced you, we were ensconced in our bolt hole, be it the study or a silent trip to the bathroom. Or it might even have been the case that we lay in bed texting you as the outgoing primary source slept beside us, oblivious to what was going on. Heady and exciting times indeed. All of that has now changed. You send a text and there is no response. You send another, no answer. You issue another text, still no reply. You know of no reason why we cannot respond. In fact, you checked we would be around this morning and we said that we would. We used to answer at any time. Your pleasant inquiries soon take on the tone of concern, irritation, hurt and anger, as every time you send a text message, there is no response from us. Why is this? There are a number of factors involved in our behaviour when we are not answering your text messages, and this includes what type of appliance you are, the stage that you are at during the narcissistic cycle, and what school of narcissist that you are dealing with. First of all, we will deal with the intimate partner primary source. This is a person who might be your spouse, might be boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, and in some instances, a lover. The intimate partner primary source is the most likely form of appliance which asks the question as to why he or she is not receiving a reply to the text message that are being sent. First of all, let us consider if this happens during the seduction period. It is extremely rare for us not to answer an intimate partner primary source during seduction. As I have described earlier, any time, any place and anywhere, we will be looking to text you and respond to your messages as part of the love bombing seduction. It is worth pointing out that this period is not the initial stages of the seduction because you will be an intimate partner secondary source or a non-intimate secondary source at that stage, but rather as the seduction has progressed and we have promoted you to become our primary source, we continue to embed you and bind you to us as part of this golden period. We want to receive your glorious positive fuel and our phone will be about our person all of the time as we are loving, caring and attentively looking after you, or supposedly so. If, on the rarest of occasions, we do not happen to reply to you during this seduction, it is probably because we are grappling an alligator 
and cannot reach the phone, or we have been kidnapped and our hands and feet are tied and our head is restrained, so we cannot prod the phone with our nose. Yes, it really does need to be that extreme to stop us from answering your text messages during seduction. The devaluation period. This is where the failure to reply to your text messages is deliberate. We invariably know that you are messaging us because we are rarely without our phone, which is the mission control of our operations. We may have our phone in our pocket and the repeated buzz as you message us is felt. We may look just the once to confirm that it is you trying to get in touch with us and then we deposit the phone away once again. We do this because we are busy seducing somebody else, busy gaining fuel from another source. It does not have to necessarily be somebody who we are trying to bed or recruit to be the new primary source. It might be one of our inner circle secondary source friends who we are out drinking with and thus we are triangulating you with them. They do not know that you are messaging, but we do. Accordingly, we gain fuel from the proximity of our inner circle friends, because we are with them, and at the same time, the repeated vibration of the phone, as you are text messaging us, gives us thought fuel, because we envisage you becoming more and more frustrated with our failure to answer you. In such a situation, therefore, we receive two lines of fuel, one from the inner circle friends that we are with, as they laugh with us, praise us, talk to us, and a second line of fuel, albeit thought fuel, knowing that you are becoming increasingly concerned, frustrated and upset as we receive a battery of text messages. Alternatively, during this devaluation period, our phone will be on display. We might be on our own watching a film, wanting to stay away from you as we dole out a silent treatment. We may alternatively be with other people. Those other people could be inner or outer circle friends. It might be a secondary source which we are busy, busy seducing in order to recruit them as your replacement. We have the phone on display so that we can see that it is you who is messaging us and we can see all or part of your messages displayed. This enables us to gain fuel from seeing the emotional content of your messages as you plead with us, insult, exhibit hurt or concern. If we are alone, Giving you a silent treatment from some bolt hole, we gain fuel and feel our power is reinforced. If we are with other people, they may see your name keep flashing up, and they may even be able to see part of the message. This provides us with an opportunity to gain extra fuel from the reactions of those who are with us. If the people indicate that they have seen the message or pass comment, we will reply, See what I mean about her trying to spoil my nights out with you guys? She is such a control freak. Or, what can I say dudes? She's just totally obsessed with me. But who can blame her? Who is Rachel? Oh, that's some obsessive ex. Don't worry about her, she does this all the time. I don't block her because then she would start stalking me in person again. And believe me, it's easier to let the phone take the strain. Who is Emma? This is the nut job I am trying to finish with and as you can see she will not let go. Anyway, I don't want to talk about her. Tell me more about your favourite films and let me get you another drink. Who is Joanne? I dated her a couple of times. As you can tell, she's rather keen on me by how often she's messaging me. 
thus you as our intimate partner primary source will be smeared to the other appliances and their reactions to this smearing provide us with fuel. It is also done to encourage the prospective replacement to work harder to gain our attention as per the example I've referred to when reference was made to who is Joanne by letting you know that there is a competitor you will work harder. You receive a silent treatment through our failure to respond. We gain fuel from seeing your messages and if we are triangulating you we will gain fuel from the other appliance or appliances that we are with. It is all calculated. There may be occasions where we will purposefully read the messages. This is not only done to derive fuel from them, but it is carried out where we know you will know that we have read the message. We can envisage you getting more and more worked up as you know that we are reading but clearly not replying. This provides further fuel and allows our devaluation of you to be made loud and clear to you. When we do eventually reply, be it hours or days later, it is done to gather more fuel from you. Invariably, your response is one of relief and delight that we have finally got in touch and we receive a blast of positive fuel. If it is hurt or anger, that you exhibit towards us, then we receive negative fuel instead. We may not give you any explanation as to why we have not responded, deeming you not worthy of one, such as our arrogance. Alternatively, our explanation is framed around your response. If you are giving us positive fuel, we will trot out some excuse about not being able to use the phone, the phone being broken, and so on and so forth. These explanations may sound plausible, and even if they do not, you are too relieved and delighted that we are back in touch to make such an issue about them. And of course, this reaction of yours is something that we rely on. Do not accept those explanations. They are all lies. They are said to avoid accountability, and the truth is, the failure to respond was completely deliberate. If your response is to give us negative fuel when we, repeat, when we reappear, then we will blame you for the reason we did not respond in order to provoke you further and gain yet more negative fuel, saying that we needed some space, that you never leave us alone, that you are always trying to control us and such like. In terms of the type of narcissist who fails to reply to the text messages, the fact is, this form of manipulation is used by all of the schools of narcissism. The lesser narcissist is most likely to ignore you completely. He will have gained fuel from the institution of the silent treatment, although it must be pointed out that the silent treatment is not one of the lesser narcissist's favoured methods of manipulation. But rather, the failure to respond is representative of the compartmentalisation that we engage in and the lesser has closed the door on you, for the time being, as he focuses on dealing with somebody else. Given the lower cognitive function of the lesser narcissist and his or her lower energy levels, he or she is less likely to juggle two people in the instant, and therefore he or she would rather not be bothered by you at all, as he or she concentrates on drawing fuel from another source especially that which is being recruited to replace you. The mid-rangers favourite method of manipulation is the silent treatment and therefore he will make repeated use of not answering texts in order to control you, make you feel inferior, assert his superiority in this passive aggressive manner and most of all of course to gain fuel. He is most likely to keep the phone in his pocket 
as he seeks to seduce a new primary source. Savouring the vibrations and taking the occasional glance at the phone when the current target has gone to the bar or to the bathroom. He will have the phone on display when he is alone, delighting in reading your messages, and will also make use of allowing you to know he has read the message and still has not replied. He is less likely to be so brazen as to have the phone on display so others can comment on it. The greater narcissist will delight in having the phone in a prominent position, having it lighting up and beeping, glancing at it and ensuring that if he is with other people, that they also see that he is in demand and it allows him to engage in triangulation. For the greater, it appeals to our sense of superiority and string pulling that we can demonstrate that someone is trying to get in contact with us and we can brush it off, dismiss it and explain it away. As we rope somebody else in, and they accept what we are saying without question, allowing us to note that our charm and manipulative guile remain at the top of their game. If your text messages are not being answered, there is next to no doubt that you are being manipulated, and this is entirely for our benefit. Part two, We'll examine the reason why text messages are not answered when dealing with the non-intimate secondary source, the intimate partner secondary source, and the dirty secret intimate partner secondary source.